Wow. It's been a while, Dale. Me and Matt Hall here. It's Grant Flanders. I'm 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 trying to preview some some positions the linebackers this time around. I know I haven't been on any of the preview pods yet. It's just they've been, been great. Yeah, they've been awesome. <laughs> I've been putting them together, but you know, but no DY this time. So I know. I, I mean, like- let's first let's be honest. Like <laughs> D- D- Derek was, you know, here this week and he asked about a thousand times, like, hey, we could do the linebacker pod. We yeah, have to do. <laughs> hey, we could do that. Hey, we could do that. So it's not like he didn't want to be on this. He absolutely, absolutely. did. Our intention was to ignore him and freeze him out <laughs> until we got Flando back on, you know. But no, no, we just wanted to say we miss him, we love him, and we'll see him soon. And but it's you and me talking LBs yeah. today. God, it sucks for him, right? He can't it talk. Does. One of the most exciting positions for K State going right. on. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. With a lot it, to talk know? about, you know. Um, it is an interesting position group. Yeah, I mean, first I want to say like they're not going to have one of their best players at right. that position in Justin Hughes. So who's going to be starting? Man? Well, that's a great question. The Hughes thing is easy for us to just dismiss because it happened so long ago, yeah. back in the spring, and it's easy to move past that. But uh, we've talked about Justin Hughes a lot. It's not just our opinion that he's one of the best players yeah. on the defense or most important. Chris Kleiman will tell you he's the heart and soul of their defense. Mm-hmm. Like without you prodding him to do so. So he's a very important piece. Of course, he won't play this year. You ask, well, who will the starters be? you still got two uh, experienced, physically gifted guys in Daquan Patton and Elijah Sullivan. A lot of people will, will tell me things or, or, or about Elijah Sullivan, like, man, you guys don't give him enough love or you don't think he's a good enough player. I think he's a wonderful athlete and a very good player. I've praised Elijah Sullivan a ton. Um, when he when he plays, the problem is he's had a hard time staying healthy. And I don't question his toughness. I don't question I, – I, he played through a lot of stuff last year. Yeah. So I don't question his toughness at all. The reason I'm shy on Sullivan to really go over the top and say, this is a future All-Big 12 guy or whatever, is like he's got he's to stay on the field. Mm-hmm. But if he can, I think K-State's linebackers are not a weakness. You know, I think they can be a good unit because yep. I think he's a very good player. Daquan Patton, I've been, to be quite honest, very hard on because he didn't play very well last mm-hmm. year. Doesn't mean I don't think he's a great-looking athlete or a great kid or can't have a good year. I think he can. I think, you know, a lot of guys in their second year at a JUCO that, you know, get significantly better. My criticism of Patton was, you know, he he redshirted as a, as a junior. So this wasn't his first year at a JUCO. He redshirted as a junior yeah. and then played as a redshirt junior. Started every game, played a bunch, and just didn't make much for plays and missed a lot of tackles. Um that's not to me, that sounds like a criticism come being honest about his his play last year but I would not be surprised if he's a good linebacker this season nobody I don't know if anybody works harder in the weight room on K State's yeah. team than Daquan Patton he's very physical he's a very good athlete he's very willing I think he's very intelligent it just didn't come together for mm-hmm. him last year uh, we'll see if it does and if it does that's a fine linebacker unit but that's a lot of questions and then the problem is that's really the only two guys you have yeah. that position. We'll talk more about other guys after that that maybe could jump up and help. But that's the issue is there's the two guys who are going to start. I just listed off 100 questions I have about them to mm-hmm. answer, and that's your best two. So that's why this unit concerns me. So, yeah, there's know? not much to rival behind them, not much depth. But right. talk about those guys anyway. I think I'll start with Daniel Green. Daniel Green's another fascinating topic to me because similar similar to the Eli Sullivan, I'll see people saying, oh, you don't like Daniel Green enough. You don't give him enough credit. And it's the same thing. It's like, no, I'm just being honest about yeah. what he is. He was a four-star high school recruit two years ago who had to sit out a year of football, who redshirted last year, and didn't light up the scout team. Mm-hmm. None of that means I don't think he's going to be a good player. All of that means is like that's just what he is. And so just because he was a four-star kid in high school three years ago or whatever, two years ago now, um, I'm not going to keep saying, you know, former four star. Like, mm-hmm. like he's just a player on the roster now. He's a physically gifted player. He's a was a you know a highly tied recruit, and I think he's had a, a very. I think he'll be a two or three year starter at K State, be a borderline all conference linebacker, and be a really good player. I'm really high on Daniel Green. My point is he hasn't done anything yet mm-hmm. for me to tell you he's done this, 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 and this, and you should be that hyped up. It just hadn't happened yet. And I mean, the, the issue with Daniel Green too is like I am excited that he's a number two and he's a backup, but part yeah. of it's by default. Because as we get to talking more about this with Cody Fletcher's injury, the next guy up is mm-hmm. Nick Allen, who I'll be honest, I've never really looked into. I know he's on the roster and they're going to use a linebacker, but he's another walk on. The point is, so the the guys that you know, the guys that Daniel Green was, you know, be, he didn't beat out a single scholarship player. Is mm-hmm. my point. Fletcher was a walk on at JUCO, who then got a scholarship at K State, and he's tied with Fletcher. The guys behind him are walk ons. Yeah. This is not to to dismiss how good Daniel Green can be. I'm explaining why I'm not anointing him as the savior yet because he hasn't proven to be yet i do think he's he's come a long ways though he is a very physical tackler he's very well liked on the team he's a hard worker he has all the things that would lead me to believe he's going to be a very good player and i bet there's two or three games this year i'm like man daniel green was good 
You know, I think that's yep. going to start happening. Just hadn't happened yet. And then Cody Fletcher, mm-hmm. good thing we waited to record this pod yeah. because a lot of these yep. recorded in advance. Um, we saw him in a walking boot on his right foot, I want to say it was. I'm trying to picture yeah, a photo. I think, so. I think it was on his right foot. That was in practice, you know, uh, on Monday yep. of this week. You're probably hearing this podcast on Friday this week. So he was asked specifically by, I believe, John Kurtz on Tuesday. But I say he, Chris Kleiman, and he was very direct on the quote back that he was going to miss the first game. Maybe back for game two. They'll probably evaluate it. So the good news is Cody Fletcher, who I thought played better than people gave him credit for yeah. last year. I don't think he's a great player. I don't. Again, I'm not going to build him up and say he's this all-conference difference maker. I think he's a better player than some realize, though. Um, I think he's important to get back healthy, and they're not going to have him out for too long. But beyond that, we start talking, you know, Nick Allen, um, who I'm not trying to say that in a, in a condescending mm-hmm. tone, but I don't know enough about him to really to really explain to you what kind of player he is. Then you're looking at a guy like, you know, Khalid Duke. Um, or Khalid, probably the, the best or true, or Duke, the true you know? freshman you have the most potential. And, and again, this is not me. I'm not, uh, but again, Khalid Duke hasn't yeah. done anything yet for us to talk about him. And this is not the condescending, oh, he's a freshman, we can't talk about mm-hmm. him. I'm saying, no, literally, we haven't had somebody behind the scenes tell us, hey, Khalid Duke's been really good. Yeah. Like we have when we tell you yeah. about Joshua Youngblood or mm-hmm. these other, or, or Wayne Jones, these other guys. Like, we're, those those typically aren't our opinions, yeah. even though they come off that way. Sometimes in a post or in a story, they're what we're told yeah. by people who know who are watching practice, who are on in the program, whatever it is, you know, telling us certain things. With Khalid Duke or with a Daniel Green or that kind of stuff, we're not being told those things. Mm-hmm. Now we are with Daniel Green, so I'm not trying to again tell you to, to hate on every young player on the roster. I'm just explaining why sometimes I don't jump to the same levels as some of the stuff you read on the board or other sites or other newspapers or other. John Kurtz's radio show, yeah. whatever it is, because I, you know, I haven't heard some of it yet. With with the depth at that position, and still the the new the newer rule with the uh, four games red shirt rule. Yeah, could you see like a Kali Duke? Maybe yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe I mean, not red shirting, or or I guess if he doesn't yes play no. any games, then he w- could still get that red shirt. Yes and no. I mean, in theory, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and they if that staff has talked about it so much, they are one hundred percent believers in playing every true freshman four games if they're remotely ready to do mm-hmm. so so and uh, in, in in theory hell yeah you know man i mean yeah. i know it's cussed but it's a, it's a great is a great <laughs> example like you would want to use him for that yeah then i would say i say yes and no though because i just haven't heard there's not uh-huh. one person who suggested to me hey man keep an eye on, on khalid duke mm-hmm. he's gonna he's gonna play some he might i'm not saying he's not i'm not guaranteeing he won't yep. i'm not telling you he's not going to so i've got no indication they're even considering that with him so I can't say they're going to, but yeah, if he gets up to speed and figures it out, he might be a guy they look at at DN and linebacker yeah. all over the place too. But um, absolutely, could be an option. And it's I will say I'll say it like this: the thing you should feel comfortable with as a K State fan, and you talking about this conversation, is if they think he can help, they'll play him. Mm-hmm. Like they won't even think for two seconds about it; they will play mm-hmm. him. It's not one of the things you have to worry about. Well, he's a young guy, so they're not going to play him. If he can help this year, they'll play him. Eric Gallon can play at yep. linebacker too, of course. I mean, so they. They have other options, but if we're being real and honest, they have two guys healthy. They tr- they have real reason to trust, and then the third they really like in Daniel Green. He's probably going to be good, but you know, yeah, that's that's what you've got right now with Fletcher Hurt. I, I think you laid it out well, um, but I, I do want to ask one more question before we talk about the future. Yeah, it's like, is there anyone else on the defensive side that's not a linebacker that you could see filling in not at that on, position? You know, not on the defensive side, but a lot of people ask about it, and they're right. At some point, you wonder about Clyde Price. Jacardi are right. You know, yeah. the two running backs on offense, they both have the builds that are a little more conducive uh, to linebacker. Mm-hmm. Not more conducive to linebacker than running back, but they could play linebacker. Uh, you, you, I think if a guy like Fletcher, for example, if he had got, fortunately, he's, you know, knock on wood, you know, not down for more than a couple of weeks. I imagine if that had been an Adam Harcher situation mm-hmm. and he were out for the year as a guy like Purple Plum, uh, I think it's yeah, Purple Plum uh, yeah. says on the board and it, like, you got to ask, you know, like, are they going to move right or price? I didn't ask that question because I knew that I knew Fletcher wasn't out for the year. So I'm not going to ask the coach again. Yeah. Hey, last week you said you weren't those guys as a linebacker. You just told me this guy's not out for a long time, but you're going to move him now. Yeah. But if they were out, that's, I would have yeah. asked. And I still think if that happens, if somebody goes down to that position, they should do it. And I'll be honest, my opinion is they should do it right now. Yeah. They should pick one right now. I respect and love the idea of letting kids play the position they want to play. I think it's probably smart. And those guys are making a good choice. But if, all things being equal, man, I think they'd be well off to get one of those kids playing the position right now. Mm-hmm. Because then if six weeks from now, again, you know, knock on wood, but Eli Sullivan goes down, perhaps yeah. Cody Fletcher doesn't get healthier. I mean, you may really wish you'd had Clyde Price working a linebacker for the past, you know, eight weeks mm-hmm. at that point. So uh, you asked on defense, 
Jonathan Alexander, you know, again, in a pinch, you know, I mean, I think uh, physically he's not smaller than yeah. Elijah Sullivan, you know, or that kind of stuff. Uh, size wouldn't be an issue for him. Physicality probably wouldn't be. So he's a guy they could play in a pinch or, you know, Jaron McPherson, who they're playing kind of as a big nickel, depending on moving stuff around. Th- those are the two guys that are, I see as safeties, even though they play, yeah. you know, McPherson plays nickel now that y- if you're looking for guys to kind of force into that at a desperation on defense, it could be them. But beyond that, probably not. Okay. You know? Let's talk about the future then, the recruiting-wise for this yeah. position at I, linebacker. I mean, I think the future, the future's bright everywhere yeah. always, right? You know what I mean? Like, we're <laughs> always going to say that. But I think I think it is to an extent. You know, you just get a guy get, he, you know, uh, Sullivan got a year back, mm-hmm. you know, so you've got more of him than you thought you are going to, much like Nick Lenders did at tight end. We talked about, you know, Khalid Duke, you know, the true freshman who I know Derek Young loves, and I do too, and I think he'll be a good player at that position. Uh, we look at... Clyde Price and Jacardi are right. You know, two guys who I mm-hmm. think um, one of them will end up there, if not both. I might yeah. even guess that both. Yeah. Do. But, I mean, um, so you've got that. You look at recruiting, probably the best player in the class is Jeremiah Harris, and he's a linebacker, obviously, mm-hmm. and I think he's a guy who's going to have an excellent chance to play early in his career at K-State. You know, you talk about true freshmen, you're going to play four games. Like, yeah. I, I could see a lot of scenarios where that guy plays four games next year. Mm-hmm. Um, Demarcus Hayes is a commitment at linebacker, too, but he's interesting because he has been talked about playing nickel some. I just realized as I'm sharing a lot of this, and I wrote you down to ask about recruiting, I realized I'm sharing a lot of Derek's, <laughs> like, premium stuff, so I'm going to slow down after yeah. that. But, I mean, I think it's a position where they're – they're going to look to add a lot, maybe not a lot more at linebacker, to a lot more in the front seven on recruiting. And they do have, if you look at the commitments and the guys like Duke, yeah. uh, Daniel Green, who's still just a redshirt freshman. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, that's the thing we forget. He's just a redshirt freshman, mm-hmm. you know? Like, y- there are options here. I bet in three or four years they're not in a spot where we're sitting here in a podcast saying, man, they only have two guys they feel like they can trust. But we're not there just yeah. yet. So big picture, you think that the, that the linebacker corp gets figured out? Ew, man. <laughs> yes, but I, but I, but I, I think people are expecting this unit to be a big plus on the defense. Yeah. May be disappointed. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I know I hate I I hate being negative, yeah. you know, on these things. But I think I think Patton will improve, but be kind of just a a starter, you know, average starter level player. If Eli Sullivan can stay healthy for a whole season, I think he'll be better than that. But I'm not sure he will, you know. Daniel Green, I don't know what I'm going to get from. Cody Fletcher enters the season hurt. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to be real. Like, I, I think it's the weakness probably of the team. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe wide receiver on offense might have some, yeah. might push that a little bit. But if I were going to sit here and rank it, that's probably where I'd put it. And if there's one of those kids listening to it and says, I'm a jerk for saying it, I hope it motivates you and yeah. you go have a great season. And then you tell me, man, you said you were the worst student on the yeah. team. Come talk like, trash exactly. to Matt Exactly. I would love, I would. <laughs> Would love to be wrong, but no. I mean, I think they'll be okay. Yeah. Um. But I, I imagine when the season ends, if we look back and talk about it, we'll say, yeah, man, linebacker was was probably the weak link on the defense. Couldn't agree more, Matt yeah. Hall. Good stuff as always. Um. Yeah. I mean, we'll have a, one more of these preview right. pods. Um, DBs. DBs. Yeah. And and then that wraps it up. Season's almost I here. Know. It's like gee, mini Christmas. Yeah. And um. Tallgrass Tap House, Harry's Bourbon and Baker, go to all three of those. Na- Na- yeah, Nats. If she hasn't done it, she's about to post like a podcast schedule of oh, what yeah. will be at at. Uh, I almost said Bourbon and Baker, which isn't where we do our pod. <laughs> um, at Tallgrass, um, and I know Friday nights, right? Is that yeah, what, Friday. Yeah. I can't remember if it's Friday nights. No, it's Friday nights. Yeah. Friday like 6 30. Yeah. yeah, she wanted a chance for people to get it to town. You know, on game week and that kind of stuff. Come uh-huh. see us. And I know it sounds corny and stuff, but. It's true. We would love – we had people to come out to him last year, and it was awesome, but we would love that. Yeah. Like, that's motivating for us, like, to see people come and want to and want to talk about K-State yeah. sports or even to sit at the table and talk amongst themselves. Yeah. They're talking about K-State sports, and I know they're excited about yeah. it. So yeah, no, if, no if you, pressure to get on the mic no, or anything. No, yeah. I mean, Speed we'll put it. you on if you want if to you be want, on. Yeah, I tell of you that every time, but <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, if you've ever listened and thought about it, just come, you know, just come see us, man. Like, it's, it's a good time. So I wanted to mention that, and then I got to go – I mean, I think I got to go salesman for a second because it's still oh, yeah. going. Um, if you listen to the show and don't subscribe to their website, that's okay. You know, we still love yep. and appreciate you. We'd love it if you subscribe to the website. Um, I think until the end of August, I was told, we'll still do the deal where you get 25% off a new annual subscription to KSO. So 75 bucks instead of 100 Plus, you'll get a free $75 Adidas gift card. I know Adidas, KU, all that stuff. I thought it as soon as I saw the promotion, like I know it. But 
you could buy their gosh darn shoes and wear them. Like, yeah. they're nice. I mean, I swear, you know, yeah. like, you don't have to buy, you know, KU would do this yeah. stuff. Um, <laughs> not that you would. Uh, I get it. But it's still a pretty gosh darn good deal. Yep. And then, as we always ask you, like, we just appreciate your subscriptions on our YouTube yep. channel. That thing's free. I mean, like, mm-hmm. if you watch a video, Flando went to the worker, put a little fancy red button on the bottom right of every video. You just have to hit that. You don't do anything else when you subscribe to our channel. It helps our business um, financially. And it helps Flando's confidence. It does. So no doubt. <laughs> uh, all, the, all those things. If you could give us all your money, all your subs, all your clicks, go eat at Harry's, go eat at Comment Urban Baker, about how comment. big these dudes look on screen. Oh, I mean, we can talk about that for a while. DY and DY Dale gets looking... bigger like by the day. <laughs> I mean, he comes, you know, know. like, yeah, yeah. Buff. A, you think he's taking steroids? <laughs> steroids? I don't know. Is PDs a problem for Maybe a writer? I, do we have, do no, we have a policy you know, I don't on think, PDs? I don't think, I don't think that... Do we but, need to make a policy on PED? I what would yours so. be? I'd be for them. For writing, for writing and stuff? I don't for think them. I'd have a policy. Yeah, for right. them. Yeah. yeah, if you want to <laughs> do them. Pro, our policy is <laughs> yes, please. Absolutely. You know, like, go ahead. At some so. point, K-State might be calling him to join the linebacker. Well, I'm not. Court. I mean, I don't know if this is. I mean, but like, I think I, I'm, I've heard Taylor Bratt tell him multiple times he has recruitable pecs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so uh, there you go. That's there you have it. He's also told me that maybe, maybe I could play like some three technique D tackles. Ooh, with him. and I, I could not. Th- for it'd the be record. fun to watch. But I mean, especially like, with you all padded up. Ooh. Yeah, I think I think if you put me all padded up, like at a cool number, like what would a cool like, D tackle were? Like you know, like. 90, like 96, not, yeah, like 96, 96, like a visor, like yeah, arm pads. You'd yep. say, this guy looks like a guy, at uh-huh. least. Not a good player, but you wouldn't immediately pick me out and say, who is that guy? You know? Yeah. But then the ball would get snapped, and then you would say, who is that guy? <laughs> you know? And I would never play a snap. <laughs> never played football in high school. I'm not somebody who, I have, I'll be honest, never played. I was afraid of getting me hit. Me neither. You know? I wish I'd go back in time and do it, because I realized I was a big weakling. Yeah. But no, never played. I respect the guys who do and take hits every day, because I was not tough enough to do it. And now we're here just talking about just it. Just talking about it. <laughs> Pay us to talk about it, not play it. So, yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up this one. Um, stay tuned for the next preview one on the DBs. And we have a preview, big preview pod coming up soon, too. So for Matt Hall, I'm Grant Flanders. Go to all those places I said earlier, Tallgrass, Bourbon and Baker, and Harry's. We're signing off. Do us a favor and tell your friends. Yes.